Hey guys, welcome back to the Canadian Real Estate Homefront Podcast. Yeah. My name is Brooke Hicks to introduce myself. And I'm Cortez Ranieri. We are both realtors. And the point of this podcast is really just to provide education for you guys in a really complex market. So we're going to try and talk once a week about mm -hmm. upcoming trends and what we're seeing in the real estate business. So we also want to include boots on the ground. So what we're seeing in our day to day. Yeah, um, for sure. I think it's important because okay. a lot of people want to know like what's actually going on. Right. So how many showings do you get? How many offers are you really getting? Yeah. Just kind of stuff behind the scenes that people can't yeah. actually because see. Because we find a lot of social media really contradicts each other. Like mm -hmm. I can see one post that says one thing and one that says the exact opposite. So we're trying to kind of amalgamate that data and make it more transparent. <laughs> make it more transparent yeah. for you guys. Cool. Anyway, so today there's a couple of things that have gone on in the past couple of weeks. I mm -hmm. mean, everyone was talking about that bank failure. Everyone's talking about interest rates. Yep. There's amendments to the Canadian foreign home buyers ban. Hamilton has a new provision in place with multi-unit dwellings. Um, so a couple of things to talk about today. Yeah, let's get into the interest rates. The start. interest rates, okay, yeah. the, biggest, the biggest one. Yeah, the biggest Why one. Why aren't interest rates coming down? Yeah, so interestingly enough, I was reading about um, what's going on with interest rates. So why haven't we seen them fall? We're seeing inflation come down. So what's the kind because of... Because inflation had come down even though the Bank of Canada in their last meeting uh, held. Yeah, so Tiff Macklin actually looked really smart in that, right? Because <laughs> because he, he held rates and, he and then inflation that. actually came down a lot. So he looked really good in that, in that situation. Good. So it yeah. looked like what he did previously is now actually working six to 12 months later, which is usually what they say. Mm -hmm. Interest rates take some time to ripple through the economy. Mm -hmm. um, so, but right now we're wondering like, okay, if inflation is coming down, why are we why still are... seeing these, you know, 20 year high in rates? And the real reason is because, well, one of the reasons is because of unemployment being so being low. Being so low. Yeah, so. And until we start to see unemployment. Go up. They're the, gonna yeah, keep we, them likely keep the rates are. high. And the reason for that is because if unemployment remains low, that means people are working and that means that they're out in the economy spending money. They can afford their mortgage. Yeah, they can afford their mortgage. They're, they're buying goods, they're going out for dinner. Mm -hmm. So this has an effect on supply chains and raw materials right. and it makes people spend money, which ultimately will drive off the cost of different things that you go to buy. Which per gives se. the Bank of Canada ammo to keep rates where keep they rates, are. Exactly. Despite the backlash that's been yeah. the main topic I've heard in the past exactly. year. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, even even still, I, f I think there's a lot of volatility in the labor markets, even back to April 2020, so the mm -hmm. beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. When everything first shut down, we saw that huge increase in unemployment. A lot of Canadians lost their jobs or at least lost the amount of hours that they were working. Yeah. And then compared to historic recessions, our bounce back from that was within four months, two thirds of the people that were unemployed were back at work. Uh, COVID created a lot of technological advances and businesses. Like e-commerce blew up. Blew yeah, up and yeah. they had innovative ways to like, expand. No longer are they just a corner shop, but they're marketing across Canada, across the mm -hmm. world. So that created more jobs. Now we have this surplus of job vacancies. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's funny to say, so a lot of the time that all these jobs that were created were really in the tech industry, right? Because mm -hmm. they needed to hire and they almost overhired. They overhired. Yeah. <laughs> so what you see a lot in the news is like, you know, yeah. Facebook let, let, laid off 10,000 people, Amazon's laying yeah. off people because they just had people not doing anything anymore because they overshot that people weren't going to actually go out and buy goods anymore. They really mm -hmm. were projecting that everything was going to be online, but that wasn't the case. Like people still wanted that human interaction and, and yeah. to go out there and feel the product right and so, people thought working from home was going to be a thing yeah it's it's kind of come back now yeah 100 percent. so mm -hmm. i think that unemployment is going to be a really important metric to look at going forward like especially if you're holding a variable rate right now right. when are the rates going to drop or if you're coming up for renewal yeah. you really want to look at unemployment because when unemployment rises is when the bank actually will most likely drop it and where does unemployment need to go? Where are we at right now? And I think too, so that brings up a point is that these variable rate mortgage holders that are waiting for unemployment, it's also has to do, and back to the question, why aren't interest rates falling, is the Fed. Because yeah. if we decrease our rate yeah. too far away from where the states are at, yeah. that's actually gonna 
cause inflation to go up because now the goods we're bringing into Canada, there's going to be too much of a difference between our dollar. Yeah. Um, Cause our which dollar will then de-dies. increase the cost. So it's, yeah. it's like this balancing act that they're trying to do. For sure. Um, the states we, is our big brother, right? Like we need to watch need, what yeah. they're doing. Cause if yeah. our, like you said, if, if rates are better there, investors are going to flock into that currency, exactly. get out of the Canadian dollar, then our imports become so much more expensive. Exactly. And that's going to and cause then, inflation. And then the same ripple effect. So yeah. one solution is just creating another problem over here. So they're yeah. playing whack-a-mole a little bit. So they're trying mm. to follow, you know, both components of the economy that really probably are the most major, the labor and the housing market. So yeah, we'll continue to follow that. But essentially, you know, that's the real reason they're not cutting rates. The Fed just increased. Yeah. And our unemployment numbers are record low and there's a ton of job vacancies. So until businesses see this pressure um, to either not buy as much because the average consumer isn't spending as much. Yeah we're likely going to see them hold. They said in an interview that I saw that they're, we're on a conditional hold. Conditional pause, which yeah. <laughs> A conditional pause, sorry. Yeah. Which is so funny because back up to 2020 when they said rates will stay low for the foreseeable future. Go out and buy a house. Go out, out and buy a house. Borrow and spend. So many people bought a house based on his words. Yeah. Right? At, on a variable rate. On a variable rate. Yeah. Which they might not have bought at that time if variable rate wasn't so low yeah right and it helped them qualify for Help, higher yeah a lot of people ask that question why didn't they just lock in well, why didn't they lock in there's on more historical... to it than just that right like they can yeah. afford more they're in such a crazy market where they might have had to take the variable to get the house that they wanted right right and i don't think anyone foresaw and, this many rate hikes coming too right mm-hmm. and think about you know if if you look at the slowdown of the housing market in the past six months which has been you know a 30 percent drop in a lot of areas yeah so People think it's a direct correlation to the interest rate. Yeah. However, people buy a payment, right? Yeah. So if the interest rates are coming down, or sorry, if the interest rates are going up, yeah. but the house price are going down, your payment is kind of relative to a high sale price, low interest rate. So the payment hasn't changed that much. Yeah. There's an interesting study that said people stood on the sidelines this year, not because of interest rates, but because of economic uncertainty. Right. Because now back of 2020, interest rates are going to stay low. Oh my God, I'm going to buy a house, first time home buyer. <laughs> that completely is the opposite of what's happening now. So now this conditional pause, they call it. Yeah. People are skeptical. That what just happened in the States? People don't know what's going on. And that's been a lot, I think. For sure. I think I know, and you know, a lot of clients that are just sitting on their hands. And yeah. like, I don't blame them too, right? You, when you have that uncertainty, right. you don't want to make huge decisions when you don't even know where the market's going to go yourself. Exactly. And everyone has all of these predictions that, you know, the bank is, or sorry, the Canadian housing market will see an even bigger crash because yeah. of these people coming up to their renewals. Right. So in the States where we see people lock into their 30 year term, they, they know for 30 years what their payment yeah. is. Their mortgage is done at 30 Yeah, they know. Years. I'm like, done in 30 Canada, years. not so much. The average is five years. A lot of people are taking one, two, three year terms because the rate was lower. Yeah. Well, now they might be taking a one or two year because they're betting that in five years, it's mm-hmm. going to be lower and they can relock in at a, at a better price. Right. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. Yeah. I mean, we'll tie this back to unemployment. It's like, where is it at? Like, they're projecting actually tomorrow that the stats can is projecting it's going to be 5.1 percent so the low of last year was 4.9 percent so we're not off the low of we're last not year. so far away because if you look at inflation numbers where we were and the target rate we are night and day mm-hmm. unemployment numbers don't need to go up that much because if you talk if you think about unemployment it's a human consequence like people are like directly affected like that person that loses their job could end up losing you know their house it's there's sure. a human it's a sad thing. It's a yeah. sad, thing. sad thing. So, you know, getting from 5.1 to 6, 6.5, where people think is going to be yeah. the start to the rate decreases, it's not too far away. And because we're in a surplus of job vacancies, there might not need to be that many people that quote unquote lose their jobs. You just need to bridge that gap a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, interest- like you said, Benjamin Tall, who's a CIBC economist, was saying that we probably need to see the unemployment rate get to 6 to 6.5. And, and, like, how long could that take? Mm -hmm. He thinks six months. So this could all happen quicker than we think. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it'll kind of give us a gauge of like, and things change every week, right? (laughs) It's like every week it's like, oh, rates are going to get cut. And then it's like, oh, it's not going to get cut to 2024. So I think that 
we'll have to wait and see where unemployment really goes to get a better gauge of when interest rates are coming down. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a, a, a good metric to watch if a, you're a variable rate holder and if you care right. about interest rates. Yeah, and back to my point, I knew I was thinking about something, is um, these people that took this variable rate, mm -hmm. right, that were able to get into the market because of the low rate that might have not actually bought if they were only offered that fixed rate, right? They took that 1.5%. Right. And now why wouldn't you lock in? Well, you know, the fixed was higher. You weren't able to lock in at that, which then afforded them the price you needed to win in competition back yeah, then. Yeah, for sure. Um, but now coming up to the spring market, um, it, it, go, it all goes back to supply and demand, right. right? So the demand for employees is higher than the supply, mm -hmm. right? There's too many job vacancies. And then, but then on the contrary, which is interesting in the housing market, there's too much supply, or sorry, too much demand and not, not enough supply. supply. So yeah. all of this stuff kind of goes back to the <laughs> supply and, and demand. demand. The, yeah, supply versus demand. Right, yeah, yeah, and well that leads us to into our next kind of topic we want to go over, supply issues in Canada. So yeah. right now we a are in a 40 year low in the amount of listings. Mm -hmm. And if we date back 40 years, how many people have come to Canada? How many houses have been built? How many houses have been built? Yeah. And right now we have less listings on the market than we did 40 years ago. Yeah, it's insane. And a lot of people are like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Yeah, so I've got a few ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few ideas too, but you go. Yeah, well, a lot of it, and we had this conversation a long time ago, was that I thought there would be a lot of four sellers on the market. Like that was my instinct. I was like, people cannot afford these increases. People are going to have to sell on their renewals and their variable rate. But what banks are doing is mm -hmm. they're extending people's amortizations for them. They're basically saying people are calling in and they're not advertising this, but people are calling their banks and saying, I can't afford this, this payment. I need help. And right. the banks are saying, okay, no problem. We're going to amortize your loan. So they have a 30 year loan. Mm -hmm. Now we're p seeing people with 60, 70 year, 70? 70 year I didn't know they were doing 70 years. I, they're, not, they're not doing it per You'll se. You'll pay off your house in 70 yeah. years. <laughs> well, the whole point oh is that God. they're hoping, obviously you're hoping that when you go Jesus. to refine yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're also, and then they're doing something else too, is there, if you have an interest portion of your loan that you still can't even pay, yeah. they're adding it to the principal. So the start of your loan. So they're making the opposite of what a mortgage is. They're making them longer yeah. and they're making them more expensive. They should come down in price and they should come down in duration. So essentially you end up paying interest on interest. Exactly. Because banks aren't in the, they don't want to take your house. No, they're not they in the business of owning. Yeah, I mean, banks aren't in the business of owning your home, especially when they're under value. Yeah, the I mean, loan to value is negative. Right, exactly. Yeah. So they'll end up losing money as well. So if you continue to make your payments or if they're gonna, you know, you're agreeing to essentially give them more money in, in yeah. the grand scheme of things, 100%. they'll take that over owning your house. And exactly. I think a lot of people on the sidelines banked on the fact that these variable rate mortgages, people that are holding these mortgages are gonna end up defaulting on renewal. Mm -hmm. They'll become a lot of foreclosures in the market. So the fact that banks are doing this is essentially helping the real estate market. The real estate market. Yeah, that's market why we're seeing sense. listings be, be so low too, right? Because right, nobody wants to lose. You know, you lose your down payment at minimum going to yeah. market right now if you're coming up for renewal and need to sell now. Yeah, I think we would see probably like twenty percent more listings at least mm -hmm. today if they weren't extending amortizations for people. Yeah. So I think that's an interesting point to make. And then you know another reason why is just the uncertainty within the economy. We touched on that quickly, but when people when things yeah. get uncertain. People don't want to move. Don't they just want to stay put. And then also to upscale, right? Like mm -hmm. say you and I own an $800,000 house. We want to go buy something for 1.1 million. We need to add 300 K to the mortgage mm -hmm. at 5%. That's not attractive to people. Right. So a lot of people are just like, we're just going to stay put. We'll make our payments here. So that's kind of a big driving reason why we're not seeing a lot of listings on the market. Cause if we did see a lot of listings, yeah. the market would look a lot different. The market would look a lot different mm -hmm. because we are still in such a housing supply shortage. Yeah, like there's no doubt about there, that. It's yeah. just you can't even argue it. And that's why interest rates aren't directly the only thing affecting the housing market. There's so many other factors that are coming in, into play and For sure. mainly comes back to supply and demand. There's just not enough. So now that we, you know, it's my opinion that we saw the bottom two to three months ago. I think November, December was probably the bottom because now month over month, we're seeing these 
you know, minor little jumps, yeah. these little increases, and why if everyone's, you know, so nervous and so the interest rates are so high. Well, yeah. they're creeping back up. Days on market are going down. Number of sales are going up. Mm -hmm. Listings that have been up since January are all of a sudden starting to move. Yeah. Um, people are getting comfortable at these rates, right? People Eventually, are just, okay, at some this point, is what someone's it is. saying, you know what, if it goes down another 5, 10%, that's worst case scenario, right. but I'm going to be here for five years. I'm going to be here for 10 years. And I think right. in 10 years, the market's going to be worth more. So exactly. let's just jump in now. All right. So speaking of supply, they just amended the foreign buyer ban that they literally just put in on January 1st. What happened <laughs> this, there? And this one's comical to me because, you know, leading up to the beginning of 2023, they're talking, we are going to f prohibit foreign buyers yeah. from purchasing Canadian house, houses in Canada. Yeah. Um, this Canadian is gonna... homes are for can Canadians. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. There is so much going on. So they actually got Canadians excited mm -hmm. because, you know, Canadians don't know necessarily who's buying the neighbor's home in the street next door. Right. So foreign buyers seems to be a larger, you know, metric than it actually is in yeah. terms of the residential houses. Yeah. You know, foreign buyers are mainly people funding developments, buying pre-construction, little right. condos, stuff like that. So, right. you know, your neighbor, it's not somebody from another country buying, it's it's a Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that people got more excited for this, but- it Didn't really move the needle. It did not move the needle. Yeah. And some of the uh, these amendments to me are kind of, well, that was expected. Yeah. And so we were laughing that, why don't they consult realtors? We could have predicted this. And yeah. Not to say that we're this, these the, the smartest realtors, but, but even developers, they could have predicted. The predicted developers this. could have predicted yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. So what's happened is, so when they came out with it, they said corporations that have foreign ownership, it can only be a maximum of three percent foreign ownership, and ninety-seven percent has to be Canadian, Canadian right? Yeah, right? So these towers that are going up everywhere, a lot of them are funded by foreign investors yeah right a Canadian developer great it's not necessarily Canadian money it's foreign investment yeah foreign investment. so they stopped all that the Canadian developers are pulling the plug yeah which is they don't have the funding right yeah. they don't have the funding anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. which essentially created less supply even so they, more supply shortage they created the exact opposite of what, they're, of what they're trying to achieve yeah so what they've done now is they've changed that rule from 3% to 10%. So they haven't necessarily changed it that much. That means that if uh, a corporation is funding a development here, 10% mm -hmm. is of allowed the of the ownership can, can be, be foreign. foreign. Okay. So you have and 10 people, one can be from a different country, yeah. nine have to be Canadian. Yeah. I don't think that's going to start up these projects that, you know, the developers have walked away from. Yeah. I wonder what we're going to see. Like maybe they'll amend it even more. I think that that, that just needs to go away. Mm -hmm. It, you know, I didn't, who cares how the house is getting built as long as it's getting built? As long as it's getting yeah. built. Everything comes back to we are in a supply shortage. 100%. You're creating, You're creating more of a supply. supply. Yeah. Right? Um, okay, so they've, they've changed it from 3% to 10% in terms of fo foreign ownership of... Of the company. Of the company. Right, okay. Okay, uh, second one. Second one is purchasing for purpose of development. So this one makes sense. <laughs> so yeah. you can buy something if you're going to develop it, yeah. but... The corporation has to be a certain percentage yeah. ownership, but you can yeah. buy something if you're going to develop it. But I think any Canadian would agree with this, right? We need more yeah. homes. I don't yeah. care where you're from. If you're going to they buy, they kind of contradict each yeah, other. Yeah, if you're going to buy and develop, like right. let's do it. Let's build supply. Let's make more homes. Right. Because they said that we needed 1.5 million in Ontario right. alone. I think it was. Yeah. And okay, so that that actually makes sense. So yeah. if a company is buying something, it needs to be 90% Canadian. So essentially what that means is if you are buying something in a corporation, 90% has to be Canadian. If you are buying personally for the purpose of development, right. now you can do it. Now you so you have to buy it. it in your personal name essentially. Right. Okay. That so that's sense. the second amendment. That's cool because, okay, you're... It, it needs more supply. It needs more yeah, supply. Yeah. Yeah. I think they should have amended the first one to a larger threshold in threshold, my opinion, yeah. but... Okay. I guess we'll see. They might I, even still do it. I agree with that yeah, one. Yeah, I agree with that one. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the third amendment is the ban no longer applies to vacant land. So under the previous one, they said you, if you're a foreign buyer, you can't buy vacant land. But now they're saying you mm -hmm. can buy vacant land if it's zoned for residential use and uh, use it for any purpose. So any purpose. That's what it says. 
So basically in that, they're also saying that if it's zoned residential and you're buying it, you can change it to any purpose. Could I make an office building? Yeah, I guess There's a I couple don't know. questions yeah, there I that even yeah, I have. Yeah. Why would you want to hold vacant land if you're not going to develop it? Right. So, again, I think they've realized that they halted yeah. supply. They halted supply again. So they've backpedaled quite quickly. Three yeah. months in, and they're, they're making these changes. Okay. The fourth one I really like. Yeah, you speak on this one because you uh, do like this one. Well, they're, Canada's talking about bringing all these immigrants mm -hmm. into Canada. And great. I'm all for that economic growth. I think immigration is a big cause in our economy's growth. Right. So all for that, but they weren't allowing now work permit holders to buy with this ban. Which doesn't make any sense. Which like, come, come to, to Canada. Country, but you can't buy a house. But you can't buy a house yeah. and go find a rental with no Canadian credentials and an overheated rental market and good luck. So, That's a good point because you do a lot of rentals yourself. So yeah. It's, you're probably not going to look favorable I, on someone right, who doesn't have a credit Right, and I try to not be biased. Yeah. But if they're a newcomer and you can't it's not prove, enough information. That's the it's problem. It's just my landlords will favor somebody that has a Canadian credit yeah. score, right? So now they're allowing work permit holders to buy. I mean, they're paying Canadian tax, so you they're shouldn't have. to the economy. You shouldn't yeah. have halted them from purchasing property, anyways, in my opinion. But. Yeah. So now they're allowing work permit holders. You have to have a minimum of 186 days left on your permit. 183. 183. I think it was. Yeah, you're very close. I'm off my three days, and you have to call me out yeah, on we it. We just don't want the police <laughs> in the comments yelling at us. It's 183. He's a, yeah, he'll call me out. <laughs> okay. um, and they can't purchase more than one house, right? They can't purchase more than one house. Yeah. I didn't read that part, yeah, but I'm if pretty that's... sure they can't purchase more than okay, one. Okay, well that that's Which fair. Allow sense. them yeah. to buy a house. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna if come they here, can afford it, to a comp yeah, yeah. If they're paying Canadian taxes, it's quite discriminatory. To it not is. Them. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, so I like that. So the amendments are so far so good. I would say. So far yeah. so good. I think more needs to happen. I remember doing a video on this ban and. How they were portraying it was way different than the reality. <laughs> the reality. Yeah, because it and hasn't just, moved the needle. It right? hasn't moved the needle. And just because people don't know where the foreign investors are buying. Like I said, you don't know where, where it's coming from. But just to be frank, it's funding development projects. Yeah. So. It's, it's, help, uh, it's helping grow the supply. I hear uh, these uh, political debates all the time. More housing starts. More this. More supply, more supply, we're going to help. And then they, they stop our funding. They're almost getting in the way. They're okay. And they they're, they're getting yeah. in their own way. <laughs> Consult um, realtors. Yeah. All right, so another topic. Okay. The Canadian budget just came out. So a new amazing account just came out that we've talked about. Oh, my God, the so, most amazing thing. Yeah. I mean, it's the best account we've seen, but the Canadian first-time home buyer savings account. Yeah, and we're not fans of yeah. this. However, actually, no. Let me not, let me not let me fans. take not yeah. we're not not fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me backpedal. I'm a fan of it in a couple different ways, but in the majority of things, I don't think that it's doing anything at all, in my opinion. Yeah. But I'll speak to it a little more. Why don't you explain what it is, and then I'll kind of throw my opinion in yeah, there. Yeah, it's basically like an RRSP and a TFSA on steroids. Like you can basically you can contribute eight thousand dollars per year up to forty k, right? So up to up 40. to forty k, so and not only a eight, lot, and only eight k a year. And only eight k a year, in a, but it comes off your income, so you can take that eight k and you can write off like as an RSP as you could, and you don't have to put it back into the account. Okay. Like an RSP, you have to pay it back. I think it's fifteen years. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also was hearing, and we might need to fact check this, that you can transfer your money from your RSP. You can transfer, like, say you have stocks and stuff, and you can transfer it into this new account. Eight k a year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's eight k a year. Or you can whatever it might be, but I think that's... But if you can only... But you can't sell the stock. You can't sell it and then transfer the money. You have to, Got it. Okay. Or else you get penalized. You have to move okay. that money right to the account. So, so. it's just another incentive for first-time buyers that they're coming out with that because of the limits, I don't think is really going to do much. Why I like it is because, again, so it's tax-free. So yeah. take 8K off your income and put it in this account to save up for your future home. Tax-free. You can invest that money... Hopefully it grows. Hopefully it grows. Yeah. And so that part I like. However, in five years, if you have 40K saved, what is the average appreciation rate in Canada? Yeah. Higher than. Higher than. It, well, in the past couple of years, it's, it's been. been it's but been we average six to eight. Seven percent. Six yeah, to eight yeah. percent a year. Yeah, so yeah. essentially doing that and saying, I'm going to open this account so that in five years I can buy a house. Well, 
it's growing at that same you know rate can right. you, does it help you catch up if you're capped at 8k per year now in ontario no chance no it's good if you don't own a house and you're very young open an account when you're 18. great yeah. that's 40k tax free that you can use toward your first home you have 15 years to buy a home great if you're young and you live in new brunswick yeah, it's, right. pro it's, province, it's province dependent, right? Like it, if you're yeah. in Toronto or Vancouver, like if you want 20% down on the average home, of, it's more than a million, but just to make it easy, a million, yeah. you're going to need $200,000. And that's just not going to happen at this 40K limit. However, in Sydney, Halifax, where my cousins live, you can buy a house for 80 grand. 80 so if grand, you're that's 80 it. grand. <laughs> so if you're 18 years old and you, you go to open this, that's 40K tax free. Mm which is essentially, and maybe it goes up a little more, say the house is worth a hundred grand by then. Yeah. <laughs> Great, Even love more. it. Yeah. Okay, I support that. However, I think it needs to be more tailored to each province because right. Ontario compared to Nova Scotia, you know, Very you're different. helping them yeah. way more than people that are coming into mm -hmm. And into I guess Toronto. if you are a couple too, it would help because you would have you can, 80,000. But yeah. if you're a single person and you're trying to buy a home, it would be very challenging for this, mm -hmm. this account to move the needle. So And you know, the other thing is that my question is that, you know, off my income, I'll put money into my RRSP because it brings my income down. Right. You know, if I'm also doing that and bringing my income down, well, the banks look at your net income to give you a pre-approval in terms of your purchasing power. So great that you have this down payment, but your income needs to support. Could it hurt your qualifications? Could it hurt your qualifications? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right? a good question, Because you actually. could have $500,000 as your down payment, but if you can't prove your income to sustain the rest of the mortgage, right. who cares how much down you have? Right, yeah. So if you're writing it direct off your income, I think it kind of translates more to self-employed because if you have your employment letter, yeah. then people that are on salary, it's okay, but so for people that are self-employed to have their own business, put this 8K away. Yeah. Anyways, I again, I think that if you have kids that are 18, 19, 20, plan to buy a house in the next 10 years, open this account for them. You know, better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Yeah, a yeah. lot of them, you know, but it you're won't in change. School. It's not going to help affordability. No, but it's still no. 40K tax-free, but I don't think it's, you know, this is big news in the Canadian budget. I don't mm -hmm. think it's doing anything, but, you know, if you're young, Get it, get it open, 40K tax-free, take take it if they're yeah. offering it. And just to wrap this up, it, they won't even be ready. Like it was supposed to be ready on April 1st. <laughs> I got the email yeah, today. It won't even be ready. And they know, said a couple so. months. So it was supposed months, to be ready yeah. April 1st. So they rolled this out without consulting the banks when they would be ready on the account. <laughs> so that just tells you so, about that one. Okay, so that was in the Canadian budget. There was something that would, they didn't mention in the Canadian budget that we weren't impressed with. Um. Yeah, so they... One thing that they talked about was helping distressed sellers. We already know that they're going to help distressed sellers. They're going to help them by lump sum amortization. I don't want to say this to make it seem like every bank is going to help every mortgage holder that can't afford their payment. Yeah, because they're not. They're not. Yeah, it's going to be. You got to really push for sure. Like yeah. we probably might not see a whole lot of people. Not everyone's going to mm -hmm. get it. Maybe I don't know. I don't know how they're doing it. I, no, I don't know because some talk. people told me I re-amortize, but to re-amortize your mortgage, you. Gen generally need a refinance. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you know, your refinance, you can't essentially because you're down in value so much that so your debt to current value isn't. Yeah, they can't be taking that into account. They, no they are, they are. Oh yeah. To re-amortize your mortgage, you need to refinance. And if your equity is down and your debt is up, you're not re-amortizing. Yeah. Maybe back to when they, they were doing the COVID relief where they really added fun. interest maybe they're doing that but mm. i don't think every bank is just handing this out like they were in covid yeah i guess it's very anecdotal like i only hear these stories on twitter and, and, and sometimes in the news so yeah but yeah to touch on what you were talking about what we weren't impressed with was there was nothing about increasing supply and we talk about this all the time like if you're gonna have this immigration plan where you said we're gonna let four or five hundred thousand immigrants in and then you let in a million people and you don't have a housing supply. Where how are they going to go? How do you not talk about increasing housing supply in the Canadian budget when we have this? Well, they say they're story. going to. Yeah. In the debates that mm -hmm. I hear, but the housing starts. You really two hundred k a year. Yeah, you really bring in a million, it. and we'll build two hundred two hundred thousand yeah. new homes. And take into account that when you build two hundred thousand new homes, you're also ripping out homes in the process of building that. For the most so let's part, yeah. average it at one hundred and seventy thousand. Yeah, Destroy yeah, thirty. Yeah. That was disappointing to see, I think, in the budget. I was really hoping yeah. that they would have a better plan for housing if you let so many immigrants in. Like, right. they missed the target so badly. Mm -hmm. You would really hope that they were going to put some, you know, some sort of budget together where they are going to build more homes. And even just rental, rental purpose homes as well. Mm -hmm. But that really missed the needle a lot, so... 
Anyways. We, we continue well, with the supply we, crisis. It's yeah. always, it always comes back to supply and yeah, demand. It really does. So. so. You want to move on to kind of boots well, on the ground? What are you seeing in the market? Yeah, I wanted to touch on Hamilton a little bit because yeah. back to, okay, the supply. So there was, it came out that Hamilton, and I don't really know about other municipalities. I follow Hamilton and what the city is doing pretty closely because right. that's the market that I work in. They were saying, we are now allowing garden suites and multi-unit dwellings if you live there. So the red tape that we say is so hard to jump through. Right. They're trying to let easy on allowing, you know, you to convert your garage into a third unit or your basement into a basement apartment without so many of these roadblocks that right, we used sense. to see. Yeah. I mean, developing is hard for Canadians because they make it hard for they us. They make it hard for us. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good point. <laughs> They're making it. It's not hard to build a house, but mm -hmm. getting the permits and getting the It's approval. a lengthy, expensive process. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of that. Yeah. Anyways, consult back to consulting real here. Yeah, back to consulting <laughs> Consult us. Yeah. Okay. So they're allowing us to essentially build more units if we live there. Okay. okay. Great. Awesome. Everyone's so excited about these garden suites. Rental I hear, income. I hear garden suite <laughs> once a week. It's like a buzzword A right detached now. garage <laughs> garden suite. Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, you would think, okay, that could help essentially the rental house. Uh, the rental market mm -hmm. mainly. Um, so great, awesome. But now what I'm hearing is, and the, and the city is proposing this, so it is in the pilot program, but it is interesting and important for people to know that are investing in Hamilton because it is a hub that Toronto buyers come to. House prices are low. There's a lot of multi-unit dwellings. Right. It's a good place to put your money. It's probably one of the only cities close to Toronto where you can buy a rental and break even maybe a little bit of cash flow with these high interest rates. Okay. So, good place to invest. However, now this pilot program, any anytime we get somewhere, <laughs> we hit a we yeah. hit some sort of robot. One step forward, two steps back. <laughs> exactly. But how to summarize the Canadian <laughs> Real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crisis. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so in certain wards in in Hamilton they're calling it. So, it's just like certain like sub districts. They're saying you need a rental license to operate a long-term rental. So they did this for Airbnb you know, unit owners, which I liked because everyone was on the Airbnb train. Right. That took away supply from the long-term housing market, mm -hmm. which created more competition, right? right? Okay, if you're gonna operate an Airbnb, you need a license. Okay, support that, great. Yeah. But now they're saying to operate a rental, you need a rental license. And only in three specific wards right now, whether or not they create it to everywhere in Hamilton, also, I don't know. it's not know. all of Hamilton. It's only no. three specific So if you're on <laughs> one side of the street and yeah. your neighbor that you're waving to is on is the other an, side, ward. I need a rental license and, and you don't. don't. Yeah. Now, the concerning thing is that a lot of houses in Hamilton, and I'm saying a lot of them, the wartime bungalows, are these single-family homes with an in-law suite. Right. So... They're not duplex, they're two units, and I own two of these. Okay. So they're not duplexes, because duplexes you have to fit or follow building codes. You need the egress window, you need the double wide driveway. Oh, I see. Uh, you need certain basement height. One of my basements is pretty low. It wouldn't fit duplex code. So I it's see. still zoned single family, but I have two sets of tenants living there. Okay. So one of my houses falls into this ward where you need a rental license, and my basement doesn't fit multi-residential code. Now, will they make me only rent to one family? Which would kill your numbers. Right. Yeah. So they said build garden suites, but... Do you have to kick that family out? Like, there's so, so that's many that, and yeah. so that's... I actually called the city because, again, my house falls in the ward. I'm like, what's this rental license that I'm going to need yeah. now? And they said, it's in the pilot... It's a pilot stage pilot or... Program or pilot something? program. Pilot yeah, program. Yeah. Um, and they're, I guess, essentially trying to limit these spots around schools that have a ton of students living in every corner of the house that's the goal i guess is <sighs> to stop that to stop that mm. they wouldn't be doing that if housing was affordable exactly. which is the we ironic thing issue, issue so anyway so that's an interesting statistic to follow especially if you're an investor in hamilton or thinking about buying in hamilton Make look sure. up where these wards are and i think it'll also create a discrepancy between a duplex and a single family with an in-law which right now they're kind of similar to prices right. so now all of a sudden duplex is going to be much more expensive 
Will people, you know, not well, get the rental license and sneak people in? Probably that's going to be the case. But they're right? just creating more of a roadblock. So this issues. is interesting. They said December 2023 is going to be when you're going to need the rental license. They full out told me you are going to need to apply. Anyways, we'll follow this a little more as I get updates. Like yeah. I said, I was on the phone with the city. Like, tell me, because you're not really giving me information here. You're just yeah. freaking people out. So we'll follow that more. Yeah, hmm. see where that goes. That's what I'm seeing in Hamilton. I wanted to touch on those provisions just because we were talking about supply. There yeah. is also a rental market. Like, there's not enough rentals either. Yeah. So kind of roadblocks everywhere. But. We'll follow that. Yeah, we'll keep following that one. Okay, boots on the ground. Okay, I think that... You said that the one time. I thought that was a cool saying. Boots on the ground, yeah. Boots on the ground. Well, it's kind of like what's going on in the market because you hear everything mm -hmm. from the media, so what are we seeing? I mean, Treb just came out with their numbers. We'll touch on those next week, but prices did go up. They were up month over month. Four consecutive months. Yeah, of price We have done so. The housing jump. bears don't want to hear that. The housing, you don't want to hear that. I don't even want to hear that. that. I hate that. In December, when I told you that we're going up from here and you told me to shut it. Yeah, well, I was right that people wouldn't be able to pay their mortgage, but I didn't see the banks not letting them, you yeah. know, re-amortize longer. But anyways, what are we seeing? <laughs> you just want to yeah, be right. Yeah, we'll argue about this later, but <laughs> what are we seeing? So I think that we're seeing really good supply that's priced right. Uh, Move sell. like this. Yeah. I mean, I had a listing that got, I think I priced on the higher end of what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but I felt that there was no one else in the area. There was no one else in the street. And we got an offer the first day, full price, and my guys took it. We had lots of showings booked as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, you know, good product will sell. I mean, you had an issue, you had a, a house in Hamilton too that you sold. Yeah. So offers. my last two listings in the past two weeks, um, granted, so people don't like to hear bidding war strategies. Yeah. So I don't want to be that realtor that, that, says, that, they list, that says, yeah. says they list their properties. I, did, yeah. I didn't list it that low. Yeah, a little bit to, you know, let's but get you as, had a different product. Let's right? like get as many duplex. people through, through. Right. right. So 13 offers on that one and 11 offers on the other one, 70 people through and it was like 30 people through an open house. And this so. was all in Hamilton? And this is all in Hamilton. Hamilton's busy. It's Hamilton, a cheaper price point for sure. Yes. And however, in December and January, I joked about being unemployed. Mm. Yeah. It's just, so I was like, okay. Okay, to recap. So in December, when things were quiet, yeah, very quiet. So from December to January, Jan to Feb, Feb to March, and now March to April, we've seen these minor little increases. And keep in mind, there's multiple different boards in Ontario, real estate boards. Right. So some agents... You know, some boards actually see a decline or a, you know, average, median, you know, lateral mm -hmm. change. If they're only getting the data from Toronto Real Estate Board or Windsor Real Estate Board, right. that is going to skew the stats. It's skew so the data, yeah. make sure you know where you're getting your information from because, yeah. you know, you need to consolidate all of the data. There's a couple websites that will share where you can amalgamate it all because yeah, you can see a little better. I see realtors posting, we've declined. I'm like, okay maybe in that city but don't yeah. make it seem like we've declined it as a provincial yeah, yeah. thing so point. yeah i think that uh even like oakville they have so many toronto realtors that mm -hmm. sell there and then they don't put on the oakville board they don't even get the, me started and they don't on share that. data don't so get... that's why it gets so skewed is because they don't share the yeah, data so, so the boards don't share data yeah. so you have to look at all of them all and of, kind of take yeah. the average so yeah, we've yeah. seen those minor little things it, they are very small it's like in hamilton it was 675 average going at 685 something so tiny so, something little, yeah. so tiny but the fact is we are trending upwards for the fourth consecutive month right now days on market has come down a big yeah. chunk so from december to jan now all the way to april it was up at 30 days and now we're down like 17 18 days in, around, yes. in our markets like oakville burlington yeah Hamilton. and we're, so we're, that one we're not comparing the entire yeah. ontario obviously the cottages and everything are way longer yeah, so in our markets longer. yeah things are moving a lot quicker uh, multiple offers again however back on to some, on, some, on some, some back to the listings that are good go quick that's yeah. where we're seeing the multiple seeing offers multiple, for sure you know there's Stage still right, a lot photos. of inventory that's sitting so if you log on you look for a house between 600 and 800 in hamilton you're gonna see over 100 listings what are you saying what are you saying brooke and cortez look there's at all so this inventory yeah, yeah, yeah. now go they, see if you want to buy it <laughs> go, yeah. go see all the so the one that comes up in that price range that is priced right, the finishes are decent, it's in a good area, things aren't falling apart, they have 12 offers on them. Right. So there's a little bit of that, and I don't think there's this unsatiable demand from buyers 
anymore like we did see last year. Yeah. I think that hmm. you have people wanting to get people, in the market. They're yeah. more comfortable at these rates mm -hmm. and there's not a lot out there. And again, back to you're buying a payment. The prices are down 30% and the rates are higher. Your payment is the same as when you had to buy 30% higher and your rate was lower. Yeah. So they're the same. And you put less of a down payment down. Less of land transfer. Less land transfer. There is some good for sure. There is yeah. some good. So I think there's, you know, back to economic insecurity yeah. being the major reason why people waited on the sidelines. Now that we're in a conditional pause, yeah. the Bank of Canada, I think people are saying, okay, this it's go time. Let's go while rates. Yeah, let's yeah. go while prices are still down thirty percent. Yeah, we're in a hold. You know, more people have this idea, the more prices are going to continue to creep up. So yeah. I think it's a good time to be a seller right now because there's a lot of crappy. Yeah, hundred percent. You're, you're, you're the only person on your street available for sale. Like exactly. that's a great time to be a seller. You don't want, you don't want it when there's four or five people up because then you know exactly. you better be the nicest one of the four or five of them. That's, if that's what the I mean. Case. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. And a good time. then the last metric was number of sales. So there's something called the absorption rate, which essentially takes all of the data of number of homes sold versus number of listings mm -hmm. and divide that number and that gives you a percentage. So that percentage will gauge whether you're in a buyer's market, a balanced market, or a seller's market. Right. Obviously right now <laughs> we're kind of trending toward balance to be honest. And yeah. people don't like when I say we're trending toward a balanced market. We're balanced returning to normal. Yeah. People don't like it yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. They say, what are you saying? But you have that's, to be on one side or the other. You have to be on yeah, one side yeah, or the yeah. other. So we are in a balanced market. The absorption Which, rate shot up from being completely and utterly a buyer's market. Yeah. It increased like 20%. And that just means more sales are happening again for the fourth consecutive month in a row. And the numbers were like, like steep increases. Yeah. And sales volume is down what? 35 40 percent which basically just is bad for real estate agents and mortgage agents because there's 40 <laughs> to there's 40 percent less business than there was last year right so you're so. saying just not to confuse people sales volume is the number of homes selling yes yeah. and so in a grand scheme but just because there's so few listings that absorption rate can kind of change because mm. it's one divided over the other to give right. us a percentage right. so yeah so Anyways. again my predictions in December were not right. Were, <laughs> were right. <laughs> so we're trending upwards. I'm seeing a way busier spring market. It's and it's just the beginning. So I have, you know, a lot more on the go than I yeah. than I did over the winter. So we'll it'll be interesting to see kind of how we how we trend and how these new kind of provisions take hold of this 2023 market if we, you know, do see these target rates for inflation and unemployment. We'll keep come you guys to fruition here. by yeah, the end yeah. of the year, but we'll follow we'll it follow for it you for guys. Sure. And um, there's a lot of times where we're on either end of. Yeah, we don't always know. agree. We so don't always that's agree. A good thing, so that's please good share your thoughts because comments, yeah. I need as much ammo as I can. <laughs> <laughs> or even if you guys want us to cover like some sort of topic or something, comment it down below. If you're on mm -hmm. YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. Find and you enjoy us at this? the Canadian Real Estate Homefront Podcast. That yeah. is what we we're are called. We TikTok just... <laughs> and Twitter. No, not yes. Twitter. No, we're not on TikTok Twitter. and Instagram. Yeah, TikTok, yeah. Instagram, and that's about it. Yeah. TikTok, Instagram, and then all over your favorite podcast players. And yeah, leave us a five star review or whatever Please. star you think you, we deserve. Pick your favorite realtor. And yeah, pick your favorite realtor. <laughs> you can also follow us on our personal accounts. I'm at Cortez Ranieri. I am Brooke with a K, then Hicks. Thanks so much Hicks. for watching. <laughs>